Hello and welcome back. This is the American Sede Privationist. Today we're going to talk about liberalism and its terrible error, religious liberty. It may seem like I am being a dead horse at this point, but this error needs constant condemnation. This video of the series against liberalism will be more of a quick list of quotations and a short comparison at the end. Because of the quickness, I will post the manuscript in the comment section. Let's start off this series against liberalism with a quote from Pope Pius VII from his letter Postum Deternus. Quote, By this article of the French Constitution, we see that liberty of worship, that help and protection are promised to those who are called the ministers of the different forms of worship. There is certainly no need of a long discourse when speaking to you to get you to see clearly what a deadly blow is thus dealt to the Catholic religion in France. By the fact that the w freedom of all forms of worship, without distinction, is proclaimed, truth is confused with error, and the holy and immaculate spouse of Christ, outside of which there can be no salvation, is placed on the same level as heretical sex, and even as Jewish perfidy. Besides, when aid and protection are guaranteed to heretical sex and their ministers, not only are their persons tolerated and favored, but even their very errors. This attitude involves that awful and ever lamentable heresy. End quote. Pope Pius VII informs us that liberty of worship of false religions is a lamentable heresy. Now we go on to Pope Leo XIII and his encyclical letter, Libertas, quote, The growth of liberty ascribed to our age must be considered apart in its various details, and first let us examine that liberty in individuals which is so opposed to the virtue of religion, namely, the liberty of worship, as it is called. This is based on the principle that every man is free to profess as he may choose any religion or none, end quote. Pope Leo XIII teaches us that liberty of worship is opposed to the virtue of religion. Immortality Dei, quote, The Church, indeed, deems it unlawful to place the various forms of wor divine worship on the same footing as the true religion. End quote. Pope Leo XIII tells us that it is unlawful in the eyes of the Church for false religious worship to be given the same footing as the true religion. Now we go on to Pope Pius IX in his encyclical letter, Quanta Cura, quote, From which totally false idea of social government they do not fear to foster that erroneous opinion, most fatal in its effects on the Catholic Church and the salvation of souls, called by our predecessor Gregory XVI in insanity, that liberty of worship is each man's personal right, which ought to be legally proclaimed and asserted in every rightly constituted society, end quote. Pope Pius IX, to get there with, Pope Gregory XVI teaches us that liberty of worship is an erroneous opinion, most fatal in its effects on the church and the salvation of souls. Now we go on to His Holiness Pope Pius IX's Syllabus of Errors. Quote, In the present day, it is no longer expedient that the Catholic religion should be held as the only religion of the state, to the exclusion of all other forms of worship, end quote. It is a condemned error that the Catholic religion should no longer be the sole religion of the state. Now, this is the next part of the syllabus. Hence it has been wisely decided by law in some Catholic countries that persons coming to reside therein shall enjoy the public exercise of their own peculiar worship. This condemned error is to believe that false religions and their public worship can be protected by law in Catholic countries. The next error. Moreover, it is false that the civil liberty of every form of worship and the full power given to all of overtly and publicly manifesting any opinions whatsoever and thoughts can induce more easily to corrupt the morals and minds of the people and to propagate the pest of indifferentism. This last condemned error of the syllabus tells us that the civil liberty of all religions and their worship and false opinions will conduce more easily to the corruption of morals of the people and will propagate the pest of indifferentism. Now we go on to vehement, <coughs> excuse me, vehement or nos of Pope Pius 
the tenth, Saint Pope Pius the tenth, quote, that the state must be separated from the church is a thesis absolutely false, a most pernicious error, based as it is on the principle that the state must not recognize any religious cult. It is, in the first place, guilty of a great injustice to God. End quote. Let us contract these teachings with that of Vatican II. Dignitas Humanae, quote, Religious communities rightfully claim freedom in order that they may govern themselves according to their own norms and honor the supreme being in public worship. Therefore, the care of, of the right to religious freedom devolves upon the whole citizenry, upon social groups, upon government, and upon the church and other religious communities. End quote. Such religious freedom of the council for religious communities, or rather false religions, is based on the revealed word of God. What absurdity that the revealed word of God could ever teach the error of religious freedom, of which public worship for false religions has been consistently condemned by the Catholic Church. Pope Pius VII even begins his condemnation of public worship as a lamentable heresy. Vatican II is, therefore, manifestly teaching a pernicious error, the error of religious liberty. Some may object that this is only my fallible in interpretation of Dignitatis Humanae. Well then, let's look to the official interpretation of John Paul II. He says in a message to the various heads of state that, quote, the Holy See sees it as its right and duty to envisage an analysis of the specific elements corresponding to the concept of religious freedom. Such a freedom includes a freedom to perform acts of prayer and worship, individually and collectively, in, in public, and to have churches or places of worship according to the needs of the believers. End quote. He says quite clearly that religious freedom, which is another way of saying religious liberty, includes public worship for the needs of believers. Later in that same text, he makes it clear that he is not only talking about the Catholic faith. Therefore, John Paul II, in his official interpretation of Vatican II, teaches that false religions have a right to public worship, which has been condemned by the Catholic Church in the past. Today we shall end with a general council's con condemnation of the public worship of Muslims, called Saracens in the text, to illustrate that the Church constantly condemns the religious liberty of false religions. The Council, the Ecumenical Council of Vienne, quote, It is an insult to the Holy Name and a disgrace to the Christian faith that in certain parts of the world, subject to Christian princes, where Saracens live in their temples or mosques, in which the Saracens meet to adore the infidel Muhammad, loudly invoke and extol his name each day at certain hours from a high place, in the hearing of both Christians and Saracens, and there make public declarations in his honor. This brings disrepute on our faith and great scandals to the faithful. These practices cannot be tolerated any further without displeasing the divine majesty. We therefore, with the sacred council's approval, strictly forbid such practices henceforth in Christian lands. They, the Christian princes, are to forbid expressly the public invocation of the sacrilegious name of Muhammad. End quote. Pope St. Pius X, pray for us. Our Lady, destroy our heresies, pray for us. St. Dominic, pray for us. 